And it's time now for the Woodlawn Hospital Report with COO Brad Rogers. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well today, thank you. We've got a beautiful day outside. Yeah, yeah. I've tried. been trying to get some nicer weather going here. You know, the last couple of days have been almost perfect. I know. I mean, I'm kind of sad to, to see that the numbers look like they're edging back up into that 90s range. Yeah. 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 It, it happens, though. It does. It does. Uh, you know, we, we met again yesterday for our um, hospital board and um, a meeting and, you know, lots of stuff going on at the hospital. We've been, we've been pretty busy these last couple of years. Paul and I were just talking about that before we started. And, um, it's amazing how many things we've done in the last two years yeah. um, in the middle of, you know, a, a health emergency. So um, let's go through the board uh, information. We'll go over the financials like we always do first and get that out of the way. And then we'll talk about the exciting things happening at Woodlawn. Sounds good. Uh, May was a better month uh, than we expected. Uh, gross revenues of about $13.2 million. And we have all those wonderful adjustments from revenue, which means write-offs and and all of those contractual things of about 8.4. So we had a total operating revenue of about 4.9 million, about $5.2 million in operating expenses, which uh, would lead you to the thought process of about a $394,000 loss for the month. However, all of our other um, operating revenue um, equaled about $406,000, um, which means that we ended up with about a $12,000 gain for the month of May. And um, although that you know twelve thousand dollars doesn't seem like a lot out of a thirteen point two million dollars bill, um, it was much better than expected, particularly in the in the summer months. Yeah. Um, tend to be a lot more vacations, a lot more physicians out, a lot more um, uh, you know just citizens going about their normal days and doing the fun stuff in the summertime and that kind of thing. So um, pretty exciting actually for the month. Uh, we were up in areas like uh, uh, ultrasound, physical therapy, uh, physician visits, emergency department visits were all up on the month. And um, so that led to uh, an improvement overall in May for our financials. Uh, I do want to note again, too, one of the things that's been exciting is our swing bed program. It continues to remain strong. We're running about 177% increase um, above budget for the year. Um, 169 days uh, patient days compared to only uh, 61 days budgeted um, and again that's that program that allows you or a loved one to stay at Woodlawn Hospital um, after your acute stay which okay. means after you've had your surgery or your illness and you've gotten through those first few days but you just don't feel quite st uh, steady enough uh, quite well enough to return home um, a lot of our hip and knee patients, um, if they're not bouncing back as fast as they'd like, or maybe they live in, a, in an area where it's just their, their, their house is hard to get into and out of or access, some of the old farmhouses with lots of steps and, and uh, narrow doorways, things like that, and they're just not back to getting home independently, instead of going to a long-term care facility, they could potentially qualify and stay at Woodlawn Hospital for a short stay to gain back their independence before they go home. Um, I say that again because we, we have a great quality group of physical, occupational, and speech therapists there to get them through the rehab. They don't have to transition from one facility to the next, which makes it really convenient for family members. And then obviously if you're staying in a hospital and you have an emergency need or an emergent need come up, we have all the equipment right there to take care of those things without you having to be transported somewhere else. Yeah. So uh, very happy about that program and how it's uh, progressed over the year. A couple other things we talked about yesterday at the uh, board meeting. Um, you know, we've got some construction projects coming up. I want to remind everybody again, Schaefer project still going on uh, where we're uh, redoing the northern end of that building to move Fulton County Medical over to that location. That's on target to be finished late fall this year, middle November kind of thing. Okay. Um, so just be aware as you go out to the hospital, there's you know, construction fencing and vehicles running in and out and those kinds of things. We're trying to keep them off the trail, but it, it's really close to right. that eastern border of the trail around the hospital. So just be careful and be aware. Uh, we wanna keep all of you safe. And then the same thing, we're gonna have some construction crews coming in to do some roofing projects um, while the weather's good over the next few months. So just be aware when you're at the hospital there's going to be a lot more traffic from construction vehicles and things like that. 
Yeah, and upgrades like this are needed from time to time. Oh, absolutely. You know, our, our goal of uh, uh, bringing Fulton County Medical over to the hospital is a significant savings to the hospital and, and updated in and uh, facilities for the, the providers and the patients, getting them closer back to the main campus for other things. Um, you know, we're excited about that. And, you know, roofs go bad. Yeah. So over the years, you got to work on a progressive plan to make sure that you uh, fix those things and, and do the preventative maintenance and the preventative repairs and corrections before you get to a situation where it can cost you a lot of money uh, okay. because of damage to other things below those roofs. So Absolutely. pretty standard that every few years you got to do some sections of roofing and, and kind of move forward. So yeah. just be aware as you're out there. We want to make sure you guys are safe. Um, CT contrast shortage, we talked about it a little bit last month and really just as an update. There's still a shortage. Um, it's improving. Factories are back up and running and we are hoping to see some significant changes in the next 60 days. Um, you can still get the perform, uh, perform tests that you need at Woodlawn. Um, we're just making sure that we kind of prioritize, prioritize those uh, based on severity of issue and need um, so that we can maintain a baseline level of um, contrast in the hospital for any emergencies and things that come in. So we are prioritizing and you may have to, to schedule your test out a few more days than you would have liked. Um, you know, we understand that and, and we are absolutely sorry for the inconvenience, but it does look like it's getting better. Okay. And so that's really good to hear. Um, laboratory and diagnostic imaging hours. Uh, I think we talked about it a little bit last month, but I wanted to bring it up again with the upcoming holiday. Um, for outpatient services, our lab and diagnostic imaging hours have changed. They're open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. They're closed holidays, so they'll be closed on the 4th. And just a reminder that that really only means for outpatient type things. Right. Stat testing or emergency testing is 24-7, 365. So this is just those walk-ins that happen over the weekends that somebody wants to get something done. Um, from a staffing perspective and from a volume perspective, we want to make sure that uh, we have enough people available and those are just hard hours to staff right now. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to remind you guys with the upcoming weekend. Uh, one of the other things that we are, um, are excited about at Woodlawn is um, we're really starting to get back into, out, out into the community. We want to reconnect with businesses, um, with community groups, and you know provide whatever level of service we can. So um, we're starting to uh, bump up our wellness program. It's more of a corporate wellness program. So getting back out into the community, doing things that we've done in the past, like flu shots and and um, health clinics for companies to you know to do everything from uh, minor lab work to you know blood pressure testing and things like that so just wanted the community to know if you have that interest as a business reach out to us uh, my telephone number at the hospital is 224-1166 um, give me a call we'll set up a time to talk um, we want you guys to know that we are here for the community and all the different needs of the community whether it be strictly patient care or corporate wellness and health. So uh, we're available for that. And then, you know, announcing our uh, uh, CEO, uh, Alan Fisher. Alan's here. Um, we're excited about Alan being here. Yeah. Um, Alan's been here a couple weeks now and, and he will be here mm -hmm. next month. Um, scheduling permitting, I believe, for the um, uh, radio show. That's his plan. Mm -hmm. um, we're letting him, you know, kind of get his feet wet and get to know the providers and get to know the directors of the hospital, get to know our board. Um, you know, yesterday was his first formal board meeting. Um, we're really excited. He's got, you know, 20 years uh, history of working as a CEO in multiple uh, facilities, and uh, we're really excited. Uh, very patient-centered, um, very team approach kind of individual. Um, we're really excited about that. Lots of great ideas, and really right now, he's just kind of soaking in the data. <laughs> yeah. You know, just let, let me get used to the community, let me get used to the facility, ask questions, have questions asked of him, and kind of uh, get a sense of who we are as a hospital, and, and then um, I think we're going to see some pretty exciting things. Yeah, so. I know uh, Dr. Ed Bio was in Monday uh, for Doc Talk, 
and he mentioned uh, Mr. Fisher joining, and he said, you know, I haven't had the chance to meet with him personally yet, but everybody I've talked to has just talked out about how great the guy is and how uh, he's got the same mindset that Wilhelm Hospital has always had. Yeah, you know, he comes from working, uh, his last five years was in a uh, small rural you know, critical access type hospital out in, in the state of Washington and um, you know, kind of right in the mountains. And so he understands some of the challenges of uh, small hospitals in, in rural communities. Um, he's went through that for the last five years, so it's great to have that experience. And he's very energetic, very positive. Um, you know, there's lots of uh, amazing things that Woodlawn has been able to accomplish over the last several years, and, and he recognizes that. So, um, very exciting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, speaking of the last couple of years, uh, we were talking before we went on the air here about all the great things you guys have accomplished over the last couple of years, all the uh, certificates that you guys have gotten and the uh, notices, and you guys just became uh, a level one. Um, but your property. Neonatal. Neonatal. There we yeah, go. Yeah. I just keep wanting to say prenatal. I'm like, that's not right. I know it's not. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, you know, um, you're absolutely right. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. And, you know, during the, the two years of this pandemic and this uh, medical emergency, um, boy, we've been just kind of nose to the grindstone. Um, we finished our Stroke Now certification um, a couple years ago. We finished our cardiac uh, accreditation. Uh, we finished our neonatal level one accreditation. So, you know, all of those things are just Woodlawn's uh, way of making sure that you and the community understand that we are going above and beyond what's required of us for safe, quality patient care. And um, I think that's something that, you know, we don't toot our horn enough. Um, not everybody necessarily keeps track of star ratings, but the federal government, CMS, which is Medicare and Medicaid services, they put out star ratings every year for hospitals. Okay. And, um, you know, again, Woodlawn is the only four-star facility in any of the surrounding counties. Wow. Um, we have never been less than a four-star facility. Um, we're the only ones who can say that. Mm -hmm. um, out of all of our competition all around us, and we're very proud of that. Um, what that means is, is that Woodlawn's star rating it's based on how we perform across different areas of quality, like uh, how do we treat heart attacks? How do we treat patients who come in with pneumonia? Um, how often are people who leave Woodlawn readmitted to Woodlawn in a short time frame? Um, safety of care, infection rates, fall rates, all of those go into an assessment. And this assessment is done by an outside entity. And it's the same assessment done at all hospitals we consistently beat everybody around. And that's something for a little hospital in, in, in Rochester, Indiana to be extremely proud of. Absolutely. Um, we do very well for our patients and we're happy about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know one of the, uh, the little sayings that Woodlawn has is where care and compassion meet and that really shows with that four star rating. Oh, no question. I mean, you go through our, our, uh, our values of quality and compassion um, you know, the, the, the right, the right health care with the right people right here at home. Yeah. Um, it's important. And I don't think we give ourselves um, as a community enough credit in that, you know, that, that happens because of support of the community as well. You know, our Woodlawn Foundation golf outing was a success again this year. And, and, uh, you know, they raised money to help with, you know, our intermittent needs of new equipment or new programming and things like that. So, just a constant reminder that everybody's always supportive of the hospital and, and that makes a difference. It does. Um, it allows us to do those things like the accreditations and the certifications and, and adding new programs and things like that. So we're extremely proud of that. Yeah. Uh, anything else going on at Woodlawn that you want to touch on before we let you get out of here? No, uh, just again, you know, we, we really appreciate all the support from the community, uh, the support from the radio station each month. and. Uh, and RTC for taking time to do this. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see you again next month with some more positive news and, and give you a chance to meet Alan. I think you guys are really going to like him. I look forward to it. Uh, I keep hearing good things about him, so it would be nice to uh, put a face with the name and uh, all the good stories that I've heard so far. Absolutely. I agree. All right. Well, thank you, Brad, so much for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you again next month. All right. Sounds great, Paul. Thanks. Thank you.